Today, I'm going to show you how to use coal to heat your house. Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. This is Kevin with Living Traditions Homestead. And the weather outside is terrible. It is cold. It's supposed to get down into the single digits. Uh, tonight, uh, we could even get below zero with the wind chill, uh, which for Missouri is uh, pretty cold. Uh, and it's supposed to stay that way for several days. So I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to show you guys how to uh, make a fire uh, in your stove uh, with coal and how to keep that going on these really cold days. Um, most of the time we burn wood in our stove, uh, mostly because it's free, uh, we can harvest it ourselves, and it does a really good job. Um, but during really long stretches of cold weather, uh, we actually like to burn coal sometimes. Um, now, I'll tell you, this stove is designed to burn both wood and coal. Not all stoves are, so if you have a stove, uh, make sure uh, that your stove is capable and designed to burn coal, otherwise you could wreck your stove. Um, our stove is a DS stove. Uh, it is the Comfort Max 75, and for our house, which is about uh, 1,400 square feet, it does a really, really good job to heat our entire house. Um, the type of coal that we're going to be using is anthracite coal. Uh, this is not to be confused with charcoal uh, that you would use uh, for your grill. Uh, charcoal is a man-made material uh, used by uh, burning wood without oxygen to create charcoal. Uh, this is anthracite coal which is a natural mineral, um, a fossil fuel. It's you know, millions of years old. Um, and needs to be, you know, mined in order to get it out of the ground. One of the reasons that we really like to burn coal during these cold stretches is that once you get it going, it burns for a very long time at a very consistent temperature and you really don't have to do much with it. Um, unlike wood uh, that burns, you know, fairly fast, uh, like on this stove, once we get a good fire going, um, you know, we add wood about every four or five hours, we'll add a few more logs. But with coal, uh, once you get it going, it's really like every 12 hours, maybe even a little longer, uh, and you don't have to do anything with it in between there. So um, it works really, really well when you have a good long cold stretch or when you want to really keep the fire going really warm all night long. So uh, it's a pretty easy process. Um, of course, you need coal. Uh, we buy it in bags. Uh, that's the only way that I know of, uh, at least here in the United States, that you can get it, uh, at least in this part of the country. Uh, so we buy it in these bags. Uh, we were actually given a thousand pounds of coal free when we bought our stove, uh, and we're still working on that. So we don't use it real often, uh, but we do really like it when we use it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is get a good wood fire going in the stove. Now in our stove, um, the bottom is like a, a metal grate. Now normally when you're burning just wood, uh, there's a, a plate that goes in there that kind of restricts some of the airflow, um, and uh, it just makes it burn more consistently for wood. When you're doing a coal fire, you want to make sure you take that plate out uh, so it's more of a, a you know open grate in the bottom and you get better airflow from the bottom up. So I've already done that. I've taken that plate out and I'm going to get a good wood fire started in the stove. Uh, I still have some coals left from last night's fire uh, that I'm going to use to get this going. Um, and the way that I like to get a fire going is what's called a top-down fire. Um, our stove is what they consider an east-west stove which means the logs run this way um, and there's also north-south stoves which are longer front to back and you would put your logs in this way. So on our stove they go in east and west so I'll put uh, two or three big logs uh, you know in the bottom of the stove put my old coals on top and then a little bit of kindling to get a fire going on top of those logs and that will burn down and it'll make a nice bed of wood coals on the bottom of the stove. Once I get that going, I'll show it to you, and I'll show you the next step after that, which will be starting to add the coal to the fire. 
Okay, so you can see I have my logs in. I have my fire started on top of the logs and we're gonna let this burn now for probably a good hour, hour and a half before we start adding any coal. Uh, we want uh, this wood to burn down into a nice bed of coals before we start adding our actual coal. So uh, you wanna make sure you have all of your baffles open uh, so you have good airflow. And again, we're just gonna let this burn down for, you know, anywhere from an hour to two hours, depending on how quickly the wood is that, that you have. So I'm gonna shut the door and we're gonna let this uh, get started as a fire. And I'll come back and show you the next step when we get ready to add some coal. Okay, so my wood fire is going uh, really well. Uh, there's already a pretty good bed of coals down in the bottom. Um, I can see on my temperature gauge that it's already uh, into the green, which means it's you know at a good temperature. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just kind of smooth out the coals from the wood, and then we're going to start putting the uh, actual coal on top. So this is this is what the coal looks like. Again, this is anthracite coal. It's a hard coal. Uh, it burns very very clean, um, and uh, but it does take a little you know. It, it's not super easy to get lit, uh, but once it's lit, it does a really good job. So um, what I'm going to do again is smooth out the coals on top, and then we're going to shovel on probably three or four decent size of these little shovel loads of the coal uh, onto the top of those and let those start to catch. And we'll add more coal about every 20 to 30 minutes um, until we have a good bed of coal in the stove. Okay, so you can see there's a good bed of coals here on top, and my lo my bigger logs are really starting to, to catch, so that's good. Now, again, I'm just going to smooth those out on top, and then I'm going to take... several of these... So that's about good. I don't want to put so much in that it gets smothered out. So I'm going to put that in for now. That's three shovel loads. And we're just going to shut it up and we're going to let that start to catch. Now you'll notice uh, when it starts to catch, you'll start to see like a real blue kind of flame. Um, and that's exactly what you want. Once we see that going good, we'll add more and then we'll just keep adding more and more until the entire wood stove is filled up uh, on the bottom with a good bed of probably I don't know, five to six inches of coal on the bottom, and that will keep us going for a good 12 hours. It'll probably take, in total, about two 40-pound bags to get that initial bed of coals going on the bottom. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes, and the initial coal that I put in uh, has uh, caught, and it's, it's burning pretty good. So I'm going to put uh, more coal in now. I'm going to spread out what's in there, and then I'm going to put more coal on top. This time I'm going to put quite a bit more in. Um, I'm going to cover up, you know, quite a bit of the bottom with, with a good layer of coal and we're going to get that going. And then uh, again in about 30 minutes, if that is caught, uh, we will do this all over again. Alright, so this time I am going to try shaking a little bit in here. good layer down on the bottom now. You can see the fire kind of coming up through the coal. That's exactly what you want. We're just going to shut this and again we'll leave it probably about a half hour and then we'll add more coal again. And uh, this next time we'll even be able to add more. Okay, so it's been about another 30 minutes or so. And you can see that the bed of coals is really going well now. So now I'm going to add the rest of this bucket of coal to the top. And that'll give us a nice bed of coals. And I'm just going to keep doing this. Uh, every time I see that it's going really well, I'm going to 
add more until we have this completely uh, filled to the top of the firebox. And now one thing that I didn't mention is that when you do this, um, what you want to do is just one corner. Uh, it, I don't think it really matters what corner, but one corner, you want to always leave that open, like not, not put new coal in one corner. And that will allow the heat from the other coal to kind of spread better. Um, I'm not remember. I don't remember where I learned that, but uh, it was on a video that I watched, and that's what they said to do. And I can tell you, it works really well. It helps the new coal be able to catch quicker. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in, and I'll leave the back corner kind of open, and then uh, we'll come back in about another 30 minutes. Okay, so you can see I have the new bed of coals on top. That'll get started, and you see I just left that back corner open. Uh, that again will allow the new coal to light a little easier. It will also allow uh, some of the gases that come off of the new coal to have a place to kind of burn off and uh, just burn more efficiently. All right, it's been about four hours since the time that we started uh, getting our fire going, and now we have a beautiful coal fire. Uh, I, Sarah's going to zoom in here so you guys can see just how beautiful those coals are. Uh, but now that this is going, again, I won't have to do anything with this until tomorrow morning. Uh, about every 12 hours, uh, you just take your handle over here on the side and you just shake the coal a little bit. Uh, so you let some of the fine particles uh, drop through. And then I'll just add a little more coal on top. And uh, really, it's, it's as easy as that. Once you get a coal fire going, uh, you really don't have to mess with it at all. I just went and looked at the thermostat in the house and it's currently 75 degrees in our house, which honestly is a little on the warm side, but overnight, uh, like I said, it's supposed to get down below zero and this will keep the house beautiful all night long. So you guys, uh, I hope that this was helpful to you. Uh, if you're debating about uh, you know, what type of stove to get for your homestead, uh, you know, I would highly consider getting one that can burn both uh, wood and coal. Uh, again, ours is a DS stove. It's called the Comfort Max 75, and uh, we've been very, very happy with it. You guys, if you're not a subscriber to our channel yet, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button before you leave. Uh, otherwise, thanks so much for coming back, and until next time, thanks for stopping by the homestead, and God bless.